yeah. with the internet age, <laughs> why would I be paying you to see something that I could watch? Yeah. You can, and that's, but you can do a Patreon for anything, and I'm actually trying to figure out what I want to do. Like, if I wanted right. to do a book of drawings, mm. I could set that as, like, my goal is to release this book, and if you donate, you're going to get a free book. Oh. So, like, is, I'm going to do all this work to get there and that's use all nice. the money that's coming in. It's pretty swagged out. Yeah. So, you crank out so much stuff, yeah, you could definitely do a book. I know, a yeah. few for that, man. <laughs> hey. I'm actually working with a friend of mine still trying to get it off the ground, like, what book what it's gonna look like to do a book. that's dope so, that's really swag though yeah. so now that art slid its way into the conversation <laughs> that's what's up guess that makes for a nice little intro totally um what up fellow art lovers and creators so i hate looking at the camera i hate it it yeah. feels weird yeah unless i'm like joking around or something like that <laughs> then it's cool but what's cracking it's your boy track um, another episode of the artist podcast episode 11 mm -hmm. yeah episode 11 Got my boy Patrick with me. This is a really exciting somebody else that I met at the East Austin Studio Tour. And I've actually already slid some of Patrick's work in some other episodes. If you watch the episode with Badass Backpacks, he's someone who's collaborated with them. So shout out to y'all, Adam and Rusty. That was a really fun episode. Well, I got my boy Patrick with me, aka Pat, aka who I call the Ink God. Um, and the reason I call him this is not a sense of he's better than everyone else with ink or nothing like that. It's just the commitment that my guy puts in with this is amazing. What what struck me to it is, I mean, I was struck to because you had so much stuff hanging up anyway. And I respect the hell out of that just on its own because you were easily cranking out a lot of work. And then we sat and talked and then you told me about how you picked up the idea to make a drawing. Cat out. Yeah. Sorry about that. Nah, you good? I get up all the time for water and stuff. Anyway, now the cat goes back to the hiding place. He's he's a shy guy. Like I said, he's hilarious. Maybe popped out. I was like, somebody's in here. Oh my gosh, let me go back. That's funny. But anyways, Patrick had this theme to do a single drawing every day literally every single day and i i respect that just because i like telling so many people when people ask what i do i'm like and that's always a tough question anyway what kind of mediums do you do oh, i like so many mediums but for the most part i draw and i try to draw every single day i just like telling people that and just because this thing like it's it's bigger than just a hobby at that point when you're working on something every single day. It's a passion and I respect that. Yeah. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Anybody doing anything, you could be artistically piling your trash every single day. And if that's what you like to do, I'll respect it. I don't know why you want to artistically pile the trash, but if that's what you work on every single day, mad respect to you, trash power to you. Right, exactly. yeah, yeah, for real though, for real though. But it's the same as when people do, uh, they work out. You know, yeah. work out people who cook, people who mm -hmm. love to do something. If they're doing it every day, you find yourself talking about it a lot more. Right. And uh, like I think I told you, it, it's hard to uh, to it's hard to bring it up in everyday conversation that this is what I do, mm -hmm. unless I'm considered like a working artist. But right, I made this a daily routine so that I forced myself to talk about it. To refer to myself that way as huh. an artist and it changed my perspective on how I see I like that. what I do as well. Right. So. I like that. You, just the fact that you wanted to feel comfortable mm. calling yourself an artist like well then I need to make more art then. Exactly. So you set out with that. Damn that's dope. Yeah. That's mad dope. Mad respect for that. Yeah. And a friend of mine, I know it's a quote and I can't remember who it's from but he mm. said uh, uh, you are what you do the most. So mm. I, I just sort of it clicked in my head. I was like well I get to decide what I do the most, so therefore I get to decide right. what I am. It, it it's next level thinking for me when it came to artwork. Like when it came right. to being like, this is what I have a passion for. This is my love, and I want people to know that I do this. Right. So uh, I have to make sure that I do it every day. Yeah. So that I talk about it, so that it just becomes rote and routine for me. Right, yeah, and I, I think another reason why I respect it so much is I've met so many people that have watched me draw or just happen to get into conversation with me and like, oh, I wish I could draw. And for so many other people, I could I could poke at it and I'm like, well, do you really? Because I mean, this, to, like, I use you as the template. This is how, if yeah. you want to, because I think so many times people think that we can teach them something. 
Like, I can't. <laughs> I, I love picking at kids when I worked at a group home. Like, can you teach me how to draw, Kyle? Like, no, I can't teach you how to draw. I can give you some knowledge. I can give you a little bit of wisdom. I can tell you to go work on it. And then you go work on it. But at the end of it, like, we teach ourselves. 100 draw, yeah. Which makes the self-taught artist a funny little quote, too. It is, but, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I went to art school. I mean, I didn't uh, graduate with a degree in art. But I went to art school for a while at Columbia and Chicago. And I loved the experience. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say I learned how to draw. Like mm. I learned more from doing this project than I did in in those classes. But if I didn't take them, it wouldn't have sort of set me on the path to do it. So it's right. I I take sort of every experience as another learning experience. Right. But man, yeah, like there's no way, no better way to learn than to do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like people ask me the same thing. They're like, "Can you teach me how to draw?" Or like, "How do you do it?" Uh, you're so talented. I'm like, uh, if I wanted to be a mathematician, I would sit down and do it every day yeah. and get myself to be better. If I wanted to be anything, I'd just do it right. to learn. And I know that every person can learn how to draw. Right. It's about the passion behind loving it and wanting to do right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so many people can can get into looking at their image and wanting to get some masterpiece of work and it doesn't have to be that serious and I another reason I respect you so much because it not that you don't take it serious of course it's taken serious that's why yeah. you're working at it every day <laughs> but it's not that every piece has to be gold and I just it struck me how you was like oh some of them are just 15 minutes and I think you said for for at least for last year because you're doing the same theme again this year too, yeah right? I started January 1st to do a whole like calendar year this year so nice January so to dope. December. Yeah, yeah. I love I love yeah. seeing your Instagram post and it's day 35 yeah. or whatever it is I love that it's super dope yeah the first month's easy because the days are numbered but once it, <laughs> I have to right. keep looking back and be like what day is it where am I at right yeah yeah it's awesome but I remember you telling me I think last year that I think at the longest you would work on a piece was an hour right yeah I try to keep to under an hour now um, because it can it can snowball so quickly. You can just roll downhill, and all of a sudden, you're doing six, seven hours worth of work that can take away from a lot of other stuff. Because I want to yeah. use this drawing a day project to make my other work better too, mm -hmm. like my larger pieces, or like actually start conceptualizing some things through this work. So, right. Uh, so yeah, they're mostly not fantastic. Like in my opinion, like they're not right. these amazing pieces that are complete. They're they're sketches, they're ideas that yeah. are coming out. Um, and because I'm doing them every day, it's something that uh, I, I'm becoming faster, so I can actually right. get it done quicker too. And then when I have an idea, I can go to the large piece, or I can go to something, and I can get it out quicker. Mm -hmm. So I'm not pining over like that's awesome. every little yeah. mark. Right, yeah, just from doing it every day, you're like this machine now that can just, <laughs> that can kind of go at your own, not go at your own pace, but in terms of executing something, it that's what comes with working on it every day. The execution gets easier. It's, there's this quote, and it's not, don't work at something until you get it right, work on it until you don't get it wrong, or something okay, like that. Okay, I like that, that. yeah. I don't, I don't know if I worded it the best right there, but I think I might have. I don't know. It yeah. didn't feel. It didn't feel right. So I don't think I worded it perfectly. I but I think there's. I, I think in quotes too. But there's like a Thomas Edison quote that's similar to that, where it's like someone asked him, you know, how did you figure out how to make a light bulb? He's like, well, I figured out a thousand ways how not to make a light bulb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by failing a lot, mm -hmm. right? And, over and, and over. The, the, depending on how you look at it, it's not necessarily a failure because you're stepping that much closer to to whatever it is that you're trying to reach just exactly. by not getting at it. That's but, what um, each one of these drawings is, one step closer. Yeah, so I'm, I'd am i assume your favorite subject matter is portraiture, or is it portraits, or yeah, if not? Yeah, it is. I, I really like to draw people uh, and animals. You know, usually it's uh, mm -hmm. living things I like to work with, but uh, it, it may be because, maybe because it's just what comes naturally, what I feel most comfortable doing, right. what I think looks really good. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've tried to do some, uh, like, drawing buildings or, like, drawing, yeah. like, just... Or, like, landscapes. Of landscapes and things like mm -hmm. that, and they just don't come out right for me. They don't feel... It feels more like work. It feels more, like, Same. hard to, to really feel like I'm, I'm getting a groove or a flow going. So, right, yeah. Um, so drawing people is great, too, because I don't like to do 
exact portraits of people. I don't right. like them to be uh, one for one, like this is this person, this yeah, is Yeah, your person. portraits are so expressive, yeah. yeah. They're supposed to be more of like a my interaction with whatever I'm looking at and mm -hmm. like sort of get it out there so that it doesn't have to be um, a copied image or like right. just something like that. Right, so what are some of your favorite mediums you use? Uh, I just joke and say the ink guy, <laughs> but I don't even know how you use the ink really. It looks like watercolor-esque. Well, for some is, of them, yeah. some of them are ink pen, correct? Yeah. yeah, most of the time what I've been doing lately is I'll do a real light pencil sketch, almost to the point where I'm, I'm okay. showing uh, just light and shadow, like where okay. I want things to be dark, where mm -hmm. I want them to be light. And uh, I will go to my drawing table and I'll just, um, I always keep a, a spare piece of paper that's uh, like ripped off of the piece of paper that I'm using so that I can start playing around with the ink on that first before nice. I throw it on the paper. Uh, but yeah, I'll just use water and uh, ink out of a bottle these okay. days. Do yeah. you use it with a brush or? Yeah, mostly I'll use, an in, uh, a, uh, I'll use India ink and I'll use a, a large bamboo brush. And then I have a couple small, little more like feathered tiny brushes, so. Hmm, that's what's up. But that's it gets, dope. things move real fast and you get real, uh, you get to lay down the ink real fast and then it's not easy to control. Right. So that's another thing is like you really have to feel comfortable just making the marks, mm -hmm. you know, because people who overwork things and that's something I did for ever. <laughs> right. I argue I still do that yeah. in the porches, right. I will still definitely overwork things, but uh, there's nothing like a strong line and by like, like a strong, confident line. Right. If you just do it, it doesn't even matter if it ends up being straight or the line you wanted. Mm -hmm. It looks so much better if it's done with confidence than if it's delicately right. tried to like, yep. yeah. you know, you get too technical about things and you lose all the, the heart of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, oh man, one of my <laughs> art professors would be like, "This is what I've been trying to tell Kyle for so long." <laughs> yeah, like, man, shout out to you, Mister Labor. He always joked and called my line. He, he called them chicken, chicken scratch uh, lines because mm -hmm. I love to just do that as I'm going, and I'm I'm trying to break this habit gradually as I'm going to just just go through and just have some flowing lines of sorts because. I try and capture light and get so detailed with some of my stuff anyways, but I think that's another thing that just draws me to what you do so much anyways, just because it's it's kind of like that polar opposite, the fact that you have that, that knowledge and that confidence to put those lines down and be okay with it not being perfect and what is perfect anyways, yeah. Like, yeah, you're gonna find that when you put the line down, or at least I found, that when I put it down fast and, and loose and with confidence, that even if it doesn't look like I had in my head, mm -hmm. I like that better. Right. So somehow, like just doing it that way made the work better than what I thought it could be. Yeah. Yeah. That's swagged out. That's swagged out. I dig it. So, um, how do you go about deciding what you're gonna do for the day? Cause to to be inspired every single day is it? That's that's tough. Like that's. That's really tough. <laughs> it is the another. I, I read a book called the the War of Art, hmm. and uh, the the best thing another quote came from that is like someone asked of this writer, how do you how do you write it? How do you get motivated to write something every day? Same question you're asking hmm. me, and I'm like, uh, it's amazing. As soon as I sit down at my desk, I get motivated. Hmm. You know, you know. So it's like. It's the fact that I'm doing it is mm. actually the motivation. So when I'm thinking about what to draw or what to, to do for the day, that becomes like it, at the beginning, it was all I thought about. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What's going to be interesting to me today? What's going to be interesting to show other people? But really, it's taken the least amount of time out of my drawing now mm. is I just draw the first thing I think of. Wow. Try to be like, it's quick about it, just the same way as the actual physical, you know, painting or drawing, whatever you want to call it. It's it's about getting out of your head and stop overthinking right. what to do, um, because then ideas come faster too. Because I'm not I'm not stuck on anything, mm -hmm. and I don't allow myself to stay stuck on something. Right. Um, I used to listen to Bob Dylan all the time. Still from time to time, but he would do the same thing. He'd be like, we're doing three takes of this. If we don't get it on the third take, we're moving on to the next thing. 
Nice. So it's like, you just do it and do like it that. and just keep going. Um, because there's never going to be an idea that is the best idea. Yeah. And you're only going to get a better idea later, the right. more you do and the more you work. So, uh, like thinking that there's going to be this one amazing thing that comes to you. Um, it's this, it's not, it's, it's right. like, you're only going to get another idea. Right. So. So is this a, a like a, in your mind? Is this a visualization? Like, do you see it in your mind prior to, or do you literally just I want to draw a lady with a raincoat? <laughs> it it it'll be both a little okay. bit. So sometimes I'll have this idea of what I want to sort of have mm -hmm. um, the overall. It's more of a concept as mm -hmm. a, as opposed to seeing what the lines are going to look like or where people are going to be right. positioned. Um, but I'll go to like websites like Pinterest and stuff and mm -hmm. type in random words sometimes. Okay. And then I'll just take, I'll look at like the whole page instead of looking at one image and be hmm. like, I'm going to take this and this and oh, this. Oh, based and off like, word. Like, huh. and, and that's more of a, a feeling or, or, you know, sometimes I'll just type the word lean, like hmm. someone leaning or right. something like that. And I just get this, I get a hundred images and then I start weaving them together. Uh, other times it'll just be in my head that I want to do something and those usually are the more fun ones because yeah, I was at the curious end of the day, I'm like, I was gonna <laughs> ask the contrast between the two yeah, yeah. I've, I've had those moments of having something in my mind and for me personally when if I have a visualization of the drawing painting or whatever it is before I even put anything down I always feel good about those ones like, oh yeah always it's it's just a weird thing I don't think there's ever been a moment where I've had had it in my mind and this doesn't happen for me too many times but in those moments i know it's going to be something decent yeah know, for whatever that's worth something that i can at least be proud of but yeah when you're picking it out and like sort of like having like when i'm struggling to kind of come up with an idea or having to sift through things things don't seem to go as smooth when that happens right. in my head and when i have it in my head like you said it always ends up looking interesting at least it always looks yeah. like I, f I feel like i put my stamp on something because it came from somewhere else it came from all the work i put in hmm. all of a sudden now i had an idea that's but fascinating you're just not always going to have the idea to, to make this amazing thing every day right. um so you have to make something yeah so yeah i almost thought it was going to be the opposite for you to to not push for the image in your head or not push towards the image in your head because you're already so free with the line work anyway and not caring about it being the perfect image <laughs> and all that. So I almost figured that if you had something in your head that that could be kind of a strain of sorts because then... I mean, there has been a few times where I've been like, well, I didn't fully express what I was looking to get to. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so few and far between where it feels like I didn't hit some part of what I wanted to do because, um, you know, what I make is not necessarily anything specific. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily stemming from an underlying theme or idea. It's, right. uh, so a lot of times something I'll, I'll put out there will then it'll be something completely different than what I thought I wanted it to right. be. And, and I'll start learning more about my work by looking at it and by doing it. Hmm. So, yeah, I don't know if that actually really makes a whole lot of sense um, or answers a question. <laughs> right, <laughs> but no, it's like, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, it, you learn more from doing it and you do more from learning what you've done before. Like, it's just, yeah. it keeps pushing you forward. Right, yeah, for real, facts, yeah. Um, do you ever use source images? Or? Yeah, I will use uh, some uh, periodically. Like, mm -hmm. again, I'll use it usually through a website like like Pinterest, I like the idea that you're not going to get um, one image or like one specific thing. I like to make um, sort of an amalgam of like a bunch of different right. images because yeah. uh, then it feels like I'm sort of being creative too. Yeah, yeah, you're personalizing more. Yeah, but doing That's doing right. source stuff is is oftentimes difficult. I've done some portraits of like friends and things like that just to try something new mm. and uh, I plan on going to some life drawing classes in the near future yeah. with another friend of mine uh, just to to get back into that because mm -hmm. that's a whole different 
ball game, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah that skill set. Yeah, that's a that's one. I'm I'm definitely the same. I've, I've had the sneakers. Right. I want to get to the point of going two to three times a week and uh. just to get that practicing. I feel like I'm my muscles. I've flexed the muscles so much in terms of drawing off of my phone or from having a source image <clears> that I'm now to the point to where I have to. I don't have to, but for my own sake of wanting to be as good as I can be I feel like I have to practice the life in yeah. person more and I can do it and I've had moments of doing it and it looks like one of my one of as if I had a source image sometimes but nowhere near as consistent as just give me the picture yeah, but, and let yeah, me stare at it for as long as I want to versus <laughs> okay you have two hours go yeah yeah like that's a whole <laughs> different beast yeah, and I want to I want to get back into that one for sure. I, I learned so much from old life drawing classes uh, is the, the gesture drawing. It yeah. is the, the yeah. 30 seconds minute long. Mm -hmm. That's all you get. Oh, those used to stress me There's, out they are. so They're much, man. But, <laughs> like, me and my chicken scratch. I can't <laughs> chicken scratch in 30 seconds, bro. <laughs> no, that's, you get yeah. big sweeping lines that yeah. way. Like those, those were fun. And, uh, um, but I'll, I mean, in, in sort of a, another way to look at it too is, I, I kind of want to go back to some technical stuff too mm. because I want to do the thing that I'm not as confident in. Right. You know, so um, being on the edge and being being in a scary spot where you're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. usually gonna it's going to create the best stuff. Yeah, I word, think. word. Yeah, much agreed. Much, much agreed. Yeah. Um, dang, I had something and I forgot it. That, oh, oh, um, yeah, because you implied that you've been in... Um, that you studied art as well mm -hmm. in, in college. So so now I'm curious on on pre college not even pre college I guess the yeah, there's the before Patrick artist, yeah. <laughs> the college Patrick artist and the now Patrick artist. I'm sure all three of those can be very different, or at least the before college and now. Yeah. I mean you'll I, I look back at some stuff, I don't even know if I, I even have a lot of it, but I'll I'll find something or it's remind reminds me of something I did when I was in high school mm -hmm. or then and it's just vastly different. Right. Like, so what kind of stuff did you do when you was younger? Uh when I was younger I loved uh Renaissance art. I loved really? paintings of like uh, Michelangelo and like yeah. Uh, all these things, but I, I never wanted to do, I mean, Hieronymus Bosch was one of my favorite uh, artists too. Uh, one of my high school teachers said that some of my work was like that weird kind of uh, uh, people growing out of trees kind of thing. Hmm, what like, was that? Uh, Hieronymus Bosch. Hieronymus Bosch. Yeah, I, I, got, I was lucky enough to actually see his most famous work this last year oh, it was in Madrid uh, mm, nice. and it was uh, it's the Garden of Earthly Delights hmm. it's a triptych but it's he, he was painting like oh. the 1500s it's a very large kind of heaven hell I think I remember that yeah I think our, that that <laughs> title is ringing a bell now yeah I was thinking I was thinking of the all the art history class I'm like, all right I don't remember it's somewhere, that name it's somewhere but, in yeah the, right yeah, yeah somewhere in the lexicon of <laughs> All the art history that I wasn't paying as much attention to back then. Same thing with me. I should have right. paid way more. And then attention. start going to places like Spain and Italy, and you're like, oh, I should have paid more attention. I know. I saw this stuff in a book. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I mean, but I I love that kind of um, drawing people that way too. So mm -hmm. I I think I got a good handle on uh, how to draw the human form because mm -hmm. I loved that kind of work when I was younger, and mm -hmm. I really tried to to emulate it never got very good at it mm. because I tried to move on to this sort of expressive quality mm -hmm. to, to drawing. Uh, so like Goya sort of became like that middle ground of like, I really love his work yeah. of like expressiveness, but you can see it's technically like very well thought out, planned out, like light, shadow, all this kind of stuff right. is really well developed. But, uh, but yeah, I was never much of a, a complete artist. I was never one to complete anything. Hmm. So oh, all really? my all my drawings, paintings never finished. Huh. Like just over and over they'd be this like is still high school. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Even huh. even crawling into college for a while I was just not doing a lot. And until I, I went left college and came back, I took a one final painting class and I was doing oil and acrylic paints. Mm -hmm. um, and I just did like self-portrait after self-portrait of myself. Mm. Um, and I was actually finishing work. That mm. that was like the first time I felt like I was consistently getting work done. 
Huh. Okay. Okay. When yeah. you got back into college, you got in that painting yeah. class. Yeah. And then nice. sort of left college though, not, with no idea where to go, like right. no idea what to do. Um, right. And that was like in 2009. Huh. And so now I'm just trying to figure out where I should be. And, and this, right, yeah. this sort of fell in my lap when I was thinking about what I should do. I was like, well, what you should do is do it every day. Right. That's it. Don't yeah. stop thinking about overarching ideas and, you know, and I got hooked up with the, the East Austin studio tour mm -hmm. with the articulation, our group and man, it's just, my life has been altered by this because I'm doing it. And yeah, I really yeah, think that's the purpose. It. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. So when you left college, did you leave college with the plan of pursuing art more or? No, or not no? really. Like I always, it's always been in my mind and it's always mm -hmm. been there, but I, um, it's maybe I was just sort of feeling down about myself or, or just feeling down about the idea of working as an artist. Yeah, I think it's easy to do, man. The more I've, I've, I can't count how many episodes I've done with, but this is a very common thing. A lot of us as artists, the way I compare it, I always, I don't know why I compare art to a woman, but I've always done this. The way I treated art was kind of like a side girl. Like I just didn't really look at it like that. I always had a thing with her, but I just didn't like But nah. you couldn't make it work. Like, yeah, I just didn't make commit that, to her. Yeah, yeah, that's the, and well, once you commit like to doing it, you don't have to stop doing I mean, I still have a day job. We right. probably all still have work we go to. Right. But this feels more like a commitment to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm actually following through with something that I want to do for me. And like eventually the, the goal is to actually start, you know, making some money on yeah, it. Making, live off of it, yeah. But like making it so that uh, I can leave my job at some point or mm -hmm. like or maybe I don't ever get to leave my job, but I get to do this for the rest of my life. Right. Whereas I'm going to stop working at some point. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this is never going to end. Exactly. And I don't want to have it waiting for me later. I want to do it now. Right. So that when I get to later, I'll be that much more. Right. That much better, that much more used to doing it all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I feel bad for people who like just want to retire and stop doing anything. They're like, I just don't want to do anything. I just want to. Yeah, that's odd to me too. Like, no, yeah. I, I want to get to a point where I'm doing this, you know, to every last minute of my life. Right. Yeah. I love that. So what do you think got you back into it? Um, I, I mean, I can remember the day I started the, the drawing project and I had watched a, a Ted talk with mm. the guy uh, who I still don't even remember his name too. I'm terrible right, names. Right, that talk though, but yeah. The talk, he, was, he was an illustrator in, in London uh, and he basically the same thing. He's like, he stopped doing artwork for a while mm. and uh, he's like, I love doing it. I never thought of myself as someone who was very good at it, but I loved it. And he did a, a project like this. He did a, uh, a year long drawing project and literally I, as soon as I've hit stop, I pulled out a piece of paper, I drew it, I posted it on Instagram, I said I was going to do it for a year, and it mm -hmm. started there. Um, I think it was, though, I was getting frustrated overall, like underlying most of my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, um, I was unhappy, you know, mm, man. but I didn't know why. So I was, yeah. and I was trying to figure out why, and um, I can't say I'm unhappy all the time now, but man, this is way different than what I was before right. I did it, and it was simple just figure out what you want to do, figure out something you love and, and do it every day. Do something that really gets you going every yeah. day. And I had stopped probably for a good two, three years doing anything that made me like anything for me, anything that made my soul happy. And right. now, now it's like, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what's up. Yeah. I push anybody to find Whatever it is, going back to that, that silly metaphor of the, the guy that would pile up trash, whatever <laughs> yeah. it is, I don't care what it is, if you can find something that makes you feel like that, that's what you go for and do it every single day and life itself will feel easier. Not that we, we have our unhappy days, yeah. of course, but I can relate to that so strongly to where like I just... I didn't know what I was doing and I for the longest New Year's I would get frustrated birthdays I would get frustrated so I, would, I, I reflect a lot and I would reflect on the past year and I was never really too proud until I started finally getting back into art and 
a few years now. Like birthdays are awesome now and New Year's. Yeah. I can look back like, damn, I had a good <laughs> year. At least these past three or four, I've had some really solid years of being able to look back and like, damn, I progressed a lot. And all of that is just towards the art itself. Without that, I'd still be lost. Especially with me because I was always so confident in telling people what I was going to do with my life versus this is what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? And I, man, I talked reckless to people in high school. I was, I'm, I was a mouthpiece and I still am, but I don't really try and project things like that nowadays. Yeah. But you can now aim that mouthpiece. Yeah, a little, a little bit better, better. right? <laughs> right, well, a little bit like better. What, what's actually needed to be, exactly. to be said. Yeah. yeah, I love that because uh, like, I, I still don't know what I'm really doing. Right. Don't know where I'm headed, but I know that I'm I'm using everything I got to get myself out the door to start yeah. rolling to head in a direction that I could actually feel proud of. Right. You know, looking yeah. back and saying this is what I wanted to do, so I did it. Exactly. I, I get people like that. Uh, I met a, a, a friend of mine who I went to high school with, like over like maybe last year, uh, and he was just. He was kind of in awe because he was like, man, I have a really good job. I do a lot of stuff, but I'm not really doing much that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I, he was so, he just kept saying over and over, I wish I was doing what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, you can, you can have a good job and you can right. do this. And as long as you just start chipping away at every day, do something that makes you happy. Yeah. You know? Whatever the yeah. hell that is. It could be going out and gardening. You could be some big bodybuilder dude that feels goofy while you do it but if that makes you happy damn it go out in that go garden and, and go yeah. water some shit yeah like, exactly just do anything right it. yeah uh it's another quote that uh, bukowski said you know find the thing that you love and let it kill you mm. you know i, Ooh, I love that it's like, heavy it's it is heavy but it's like i get where he's coming from he's saying like find the thing that you love that you have passion about it and do it until you die yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. That it goes back to moments where I like had to break something. Like I will die for this, yo. Like I'm yeah. not gonna stop doing this. Like I was lost too much in life to to give up on this again. Like I'm not gonna do this. Like nah. Like I finally got a little direction. Like my dad. I've had to tell. I've I've had many moments where like my dad could come in and try and tell me to stop this. Like me and him could stop talking for yeah. if that's what it would take. Like nah, I will never. Mm -hmm. And that's I'm I'm so thankful to my dad for that because he always embraced me being an artist and always. I mean yeah, I got to make money and do that, but he never once tried to convince me to do something else. And I always appreciate that so much because so many times in life we can have somebody that we look up to that could give us a suggestion and then boom we take that and not yeah. not go towards that dream or that passion yeah and you know most of those people are not trying to dissuade you from anything that you right. love they're thinking for you they're thinking right the best yeah for you but yeah uh it doesn't always come off that way so i i try to remind myself for anybody who's asking me for advice or mm -hmm. anything is is to keep that in mind and be like you know at the end of the day it's your choice you have to follow what you want to do right but don't ever stop reevaluating what that is. Right. You know, yeah. In a way, too. For sure. You can get down a path and start mm -hmm. making good money and start doing all this other stuff and then take a left turn and, and do something completely different. There's never, it's never too late to start again or right. start something new. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing that right now, even in the art. Like the East Hall Studio Tour really changed my <laughs> life. From meeting a few of you guys. Finally having a reason to go talk to people like, yo, I'm about to start this podcast. I would like to invite you. And that's been really awesome and good for me. But between that and now, I had an idea of what I wanted to do with with art and the world and all that. And now I'm like, damn, I think I just want to be a gallery artist now. Like, And I think that's in, think which is, is wild because yeah. I was shitting on the gallery <laughs> scene for years. Like, man, fuck that. That's not for me. And now I'm like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to get in there. And like, why not? Well, I mean, it's crazy, yeah. But. Uh, and I love that too. Is like because you can change. Like that doesn't have to be the end of it either. Like mm -hmm. that that'll be a part of the story. Like each thing that I do is not the story. That the story right. is the collection of everything I've done when it's all done. Right. You know. So it's like I'm not gonna make one thing that's gonna define what I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep making stuff and maybe I'll have some gallery shows. Maybe I'll just sell some stuff to uh, hotels. Who knows? Like maybe I'll, yeah. you know, do magazines. Maybe I'll have all this other stuff come up. Uh, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just end up doing this forever. Right. And 
I'm not upset with that. Right, yeah. And I think that mindset alone is what I'm starting to get more comfortable with. Like, I don't know what I want to do with this art. Like, do I, hopefully, if I could create more jobs for other artists and change the art scene in some type of really cool way, I would love to do that. But at this point now, I'm trying not to assume what is going to happen or what I even want to do for that matter. I think I just want to sell some art and see what goes from there. Maybe this podcast will be my way of reaching out to other artists and helping them out. I don't know, <laughs> but it has been a crazy crossroads this past few months. That's for sure. But, but anyways, enough about me shit. Um, I was curious as we reflected, <laughs> no, no, no. as we reflected and talked about art in the past and all that, do you remember some of your first few art memories? Uh, way back when, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm Isn't it really... amazing how those stick with us? <laughs> like, it's crazy. Everybody I've asked, immediately, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm some after school thing. I was probably in second or third grade, mm -hmm. and I remember drawing a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, uh, I looked at it and I was like, well, that looks like a wreck. Like, it looks like what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it comes down to, like, people giving you, uh, you know, praise or being like, oh, you're good at that. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember that as much as right. doing, like, I made something that I liked to look at after it was done. Whoa, so time out. This could be a crazy full circle <laughs> moment. You just, so kind of similar to what you're doing now is what happened is you just sat at a desk. I was like, I'm going to draw a raccoon. Yeah. And you drew a raccoon. And, and now you're doing that crazy, right? How yeah. that and now full circle. And yeah. That's all I ever wanted to do, apparently. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That's so fly. That's wild. You got any other ones? Or was, uh, that, was that like one of the first ones, you think? That one's probably one that I like remember. Um, and because I, I, I don't, I just always, always remember making stuff. Mm -hmm. Like drawing, painting. Uh, I still like to sculpt. So I'd like to get back into that. That'd be mm -hmm. a lot of fun again. But I like to do those things. And, uh, you know, I sort of reflect now and try to figure out uh, why, why I was unhappy. And it was mm -hmm. because I wasn't doing the things I like to do. Yeah. Uh, and it, I always was trying to figure out why I even like doing these things. Why right. I like drawing. And it's, it, there's no answer to mm -hmm. why. It's just the act of physically putting things on paper mark making it's yeah. just rewarding i like it's it seems so silly and so arbitrary like something right. like this can make me so happy but it really does like right yeah it really changes my mood and keeps me up so i don't have a lot of specific memories i just know that every time i did it um i didn't want to do anything else you know right. near as much as i wanted to get back to doing that yeah yeah i think for me is just the the fact that I'm I'm in a, such a zen like state when I draw, like I could be having the worst day ever, best day ever, doesn't matter. Everything stops when I start to draw. I'm not thinking about anything anymore, and it's it's crazy how that happens. But even if I'm playing a podcast while I'm drawing, or or listening to music while I'm drawing, or whatever, it's it's kind of like white noise. It's just something I like, just in the fact that doing it. But I don't know. It's just the the fact that everything shuts off. Yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, it's just I feel this like very very similar. I listen to a lot of different podcasts, listen to music all the time, or or even watching TV or a movie or something. I don't. Uh, <laughs> there's the cat going on. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't worry so much about things. You know, when mm. I'm when I'm drawing, uh, and I can I can really whip myself up into a good like worry. <laughs> right. <laughs> and thinking about this or that, and like yeah. where's my you know wherever. The stress or anxiety is coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a good way to get me out of that sort of right. space and remind myself that this is just it. This is everything yeah. to me. Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So um, back to the the three sixty five mm -hmm. project. I don't know what that's what I call it. I guess that's what I started out calling it too. Oh, so awesome! Totally hey, fine. that's what's <laughs> up. Yeah. So, um, so for the first one, what are some of the things you think? I, that can this can be such a, a question to unpack in so many different ways. I guess I'm just from day one to day three sixty five, or some of the technical things you think you might have got better at, some of the things you learned about yourself, uh, and yeah. all types of things within <laughs> that. I guess we could call, talk about some of the. Did you feel your skill set improve afterwards, and what kind of things do you think you improved yeah. with? Um, it's it's a lot. I mean, there's there's nothing 
more important to me than what I learned about myself, like mm -hmm. about calling myself an artist and mm -hmm. like thinking in terms of the fact that this is now what I do, uh, as opposed to just like a side thing. This mm -hmm. is not a side right. thing for me anymore. This is what I do. So that there's no better, nothing better I could learn <laughs> right. than that. And that's something I learned heavily and I'm still learning it mm -hmm. from doing it again. But, uh, but the technical stuff, yeah, like it's crazy how much, faster I got, how much more confident in my line work, how much more control, how much I could to conceive of an idea and get it done in that 45 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. My gosh, I never, like I said, when I was younger, I didn't finish things. Right. And it, yeah. cause I would just look at it and be like, it's not done, but I don't want to touch it anymore. I'm just right. like, I can't get it there. Uh, and now I could get things where I wanted them real fast. Yeah. And, uh, I, I liked trying a lot of different things too, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning. I would use pens. I would use uh, sometimes you know charcoal or, or pastel or pens, pencils, different things like that. Um, but I got to the ink because the ink was so fast. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a quick medium, uh, and I always have loved uh, uh, like Japanese, uh, Chinese, uh, Korean like printmaking and mark making. Mm -hmm. So uh, doing doing work with ink was always something I wanted to do. Um, and this just gave me a reason to. Yeah. So. I love the man, the positive negative interplay on this one's so amazing. I'm gonna throw it up so I can remember for myself. Oh no. So slide please. that image in boom, right there as that part. Yeah. I loved actually that these, uh, that kind of positive negative space, uh, I really started to open up with. Again, because of the, the black and white medium, like it, it just leads you to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love sort of playing how far I can go with an implied line. Like how far can I go? What can I not put that y when you look at it, you're going to you're going to fill it all in for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like something like that. I just don't uh, I don't know what I'm, someone else is going to see which is also kind of fun because then you add, uh, you make the viewer part, part of the artwork. Like they're making lines for you just by looking at it and they're, they're right. filling in the blanks. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was one of the slickest <clears throat> things ever that one of my professors showed me when he, that was, that was so awesome. Mr. Mr. Labor, I love you so much for that. He, that first live drawing class, we didn't even draw the model the first week. He's like, we're going to learn about lines. And the way he broke it down, he blew our minds. And it was amazing. And we was all so accepted to it. And it was his first live drawing class in like 10, 15 years. So it just felt like it was like just so God new and like fresh. It, and yeah. Like, it, like, yeah. <laughs> man. And he just broke down implied lines and all that. And I think I forgot what he showed us with. And he was like, what is this shape right here? And I think for whatever it was, I think it was like, it's a sphere. It's like, no, it's not. I'm like, what do you mean, no, it's not? We see it right there. Yeah. Like, it's a sphere. It's like, I mean, technically it's not, though. Because, like, where's the other part? And then that's when he broke down the positive and negative interplay. He's like, but notice how your mind told you that's what it was because you knew what the rest of that was. You saw the shadow and you know what else is going to happen, whether that line is there or not. And that's when he broke that down that, See, Kyle, you don't need to have every single line Not in every there. chicken scratch. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it blew my mind. And I love. I still love doing that sometimes. I, I want to get back into doing that a little bit more. Because I've, I've gotten this comfort, and this is going to go into a quite, one of my next questions anyway, this, this comfort of what I want to do with, with my highlights with the white charcoal or when I want to get something dark with the ink pen and I've gotten to a point to where whatever it is on the figure, whether it's your skin tones, the light hitting it, the shadows hitting it, or even the clothes, I know exactly what instrument I want to use to get that texture or that shading. But nowadays, I'm wanting to not do that so much because I do this all on gray paper. So mm -hmm. for all of that, I'm not allowing that positive negative interplay anymore. And I'm, I've gotten to a good point of execution now, but now I want to get back into loosening up a little bit and getting back into that positive negative interplay. I think I need to find a little bit more of a balance. I think always yeah. we all need to find that balance. Cause right. you can go really far away from being able to, to be technical about what you want. Mm -hmm. But if it's, if that 
is fighting against what your finished product, what you want it to be, right. then it's never going to work. Like you can't force something, you can't force a, a medium to do something that it's not going to want to do naturally right? or not going to help you get to where you want to go. Yeah, exactly. Which, which brings me to, to asking you because you're so expressive with, with letting the ink wash sometimes and kind of branch out like it looks like it's doing on this one and then there's other ones where you have some more jagged lines and you're going in with your line work more how do you know when to when to switch that up or what kind of things go through your mind do you think is it just a pure gut thing or i would have to say most of the time it's a gut thing okay. most of the time it's uh it's not thought out too much ahead mm -hmm. of time but you know i sort of let the, the work inform me what it's going to be you know, by the end of it, uh, it, it's just about what it looks like, you know? It really is. It's just about, like, what did that image tell me to do? Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, I don't know. It's not always easy to answer that kind of question mm -hmm. because sometimes, like, you want to have an idea and you want to find a way to get there the fastest and use the right technique. Um, there really isn't the right technique to do anything. Right. It's all about you know, feeling it out and feeling it through and figuring out, you know, I like the expressiveness of my work. I like the expressiveness of the ink. Mm -hmm. That That's why I, I let it go. That's why I let it spread. I, I don't try to control it too much. I don't worry about whether or not I'm gonna finish even like a face in that. Or yeah. like, sometimes I'm gonna put in all the features, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm just gonna let it settle. So, right. And the fact that you didn't put a face in there, I think it was a great call. I think it was a phenomenal fall. Good call. Just put those lips on there. And on this one, was this titled Mirror or something? This is from this year, right? Yeah, this is from this year. This is a so. couple. I think it was Mirror. I'm sure we could we could look it up. I, I've reflection never, or something yeah, along those lines. I think it was Mirror. I think yeah. you're right. I love the fact that it's not centered. Just that, just putting it off to the side just a little bit. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but... Either I just I love that the fact that it's not right smack dab yeah. in the middle <laughs> left and right. It, it can be so hard not to do things like right down the middle, but mm -hmm. they rarely like you really have to. It's hard to make a dead center drawing work like yeah, when your is. focus is right in the middle. Yeah, oof, it's not easy. Yeah, <laughs> this one's gorgeous too. I yeah. love this one. Almost everything from this year, I've just been like wow, and just sit and stare at it for so long <laughs> on my phone. Just that, that breaking away of that space once again. Like, I bet there are certain times where your mind's... It, even if you don't even know it, I, I'd almost guarantee there's going to be some times where... Like, I bet it's more contour lines around, like, shoulders, elbows, things like that. Knees, whenever you want to express that, of course. And then I bet for more hair, clothes, things that are a bit more... I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but this feels like it explains it very good. <laughs> it has a bit of texture. <laughs> right. Like some yeah. sort of like, uh, there's some volume to it. Yeah, like I bet those are, hair. Yeah, volume. Yeah. yeah, that's a good word. I bet things with volume, those are the times I bet when you use a lot more of the washes. But nonetheless, though, yeah, like your, your mark making, the way you differentiate on things, the weight in terms of how you have like the the line weight on this and how it's going from something very thick and then doing that calligraphy type type getting thinner those are little tricks little things that uh, I hate to say tricks the little mm -hmm. techniques mm -hmm. that I'm still learning you know mm -hmm. and I love that I, like yeah the worst thing I think would be the day where I, I didn't learn something new about how to uh, use this material or mm -hmm. this medium you know right because when, when you're, you're doing it at a high level, like when you feel like you're really under control and you know what you're doing, like that's fun. There's a lot of confidence that you gain from that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, when I see someone who's really, really good at what they do, like I want them to do something different. Mm -hmm. I want them to push themselves a little further to get on that edge where they're not, it doesn't look like they're in control anymore. Right. That's where I feel like the best stuff, like I said, comes from is that. Yeah. yeah, see, I had a theory, but you proved me wrong on this uh -huh. one. Oh, really? Well, you did. <laughs> there are lines, but then you use the negative space between her 
inside of her arm and her body and use the wash for that <laughs> but, and then you like fuck the outside of it we're going in the negative space bro that's so dope that's I know. amazing and those are the those are the little things that I love the most is like right. try something that doesn't seem right doesn't right. feel right to me it's like no yeah. I, I know it's gonna work if I do it this way but if I do it this way how can I make it work right and a traditional photo or if it was one of Kyle's super overly detailed drawings from back in my day, or even if you caught me in an overly detailed moment right now, of course, whatever's right there, that gray would be, everything would be gray behind it, and then it would just take away from that positive negative interplay, and yeah, man, less is more so many times. And that's one of them great, great, fantastic depictions of it. And when you, when you start doing these things like this, then all of a sudden, like later on down the line, I'll have this great idea for a drawing and I'll know what to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm not pushing myself and trying new things, like I wouldn't come up with this new idea and I wouldn't be able to execute it so well uh, or like get it down the way I want to if I didn't have all these other tools here yeah. that I'm, I'm learning along the way. Man. How many, so East, was East one of your, you said that was one of the first shows that so you're are you getting back into the rhythm of shows again yeah so, right now i think e this past east was the what? third show i think we did uh as a group uh yeah it was the third year we'd done one so okay. i i started showing at east in 2014 i want to okay. say so it's it's still just i'm still rolling back into it now okay so. Do you do many other shows outside of these? Uh, whatever I can, uh, but I'm also, the business side of it is hard, you know? It's always harder to like get ro motivated to find the next show or find the next yeah. thing. Because they're not always easy. Like it's not like you just sign up to do something, you know, a lot of it's legwork. Like I did a, a little pop-up show at West Elm a few mm. weeks ago. Uh, but it's a lot of a lot of that is the hardest part about being an artist is like really hitting the pavement, like pounding the pavement and having finding, to find where these spots are and, and what the works. loops that you have to get through mm -hmm. to get in some of the shows. And yeah, see, I have no idea about a lot of these different things. Too. Most of it's just asking now. Most of like everywhere I go, like it's always on my mind. So mm -hmm. I'm talking to like if I go out to eat, you know, I'm, I'm looking at what's on the walls and mm -hmm. to, is this a good spot for what I, I do? You know, uh, will it be worth a lot of my time to, to try to mm -hmm. drum up a, a show at a coffee house or would it be better to, to really hammer in and try to get into a gallery? Mm -hmm. um, I've been back and forth trying to get into doing a, one of the shows at Cherry Cola Dog. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just heard about this recently. Too. I mean, they're a great group of people. I did a show at the Belmont, uh, which was uh, run by someone who I met through uh, the East Austin Studio Tour also. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I met a bunch of the people from Cherry Cola Dog there, mm. and they were like, "You should come over and do this." So um, a lot of it is it it just it builds on itself. The more mm. you do, the more you're gonna meet people who are gonna give you opportunities to do right. that. So mm. just like what you're doing, you know, getting out there talking to people. That's the yeah. number one thing. Right. Yeah. No one's gonna come to your door and say, "Give me your artwork." <laughs> For real, <laughs> man. Yeah. Which is the gift and curse of yeah. I work my ass off and I draw every single day, but I'm in my my house doing it. And that's exactly. It. Yeah. yeah. So like, <laughs> eventually you got to get out the house, fam. Like, yeah. You know, that's a, that's actually another podcast I think I was listening to for a while. It's a, it was called uh, uh, what was it? It was uh, make something and tell everybody. Mm. Like that's like the best advice you know I think any artist can really get is like just make something and then tell everybody about it. Mm. Uh, it sounds a little self-promotive. It sounds a little, but if it's something you want to do, right? No one is really gonna hunt you down for right. what you love. So yeah. posting on Instagram, that was like my first out, mm -hmm. and I've I've sold some stuff there. I've gotten some people to um, made some great contacts. I made some friends who I've never met, right? Who are like in Australia and in yeah. Norway, like people who are just like we talk back and forth now because right. we have this outlet to yeah. share our work. Instagram is really fly for that. I've mm -hmm. been I've been preaching about Instagram to so many people. Instagram, <laughs> especially versus Facebook, because yeah. Facebook is obviously the most common form of social media. But in terms of promotions and all of that, or 
anything if catered towards just one thing it's hard to push it on facebook because facebook is so open to so many things and nowadays a meme is going to get more clicks and attention versus almost anything that somebody's really put their soul into and for that same purpose i tell people yo just try instagram yes it's annoying at first yes it's overwhelming because you got to figure it out and get into it and make some posts you got to like some stuff but there's a community on there and yeah like it's you, a, just like you're saying yeah. you can make some money off of you this. can make some money you can make right. you know like i said friends make these connections yeah they, just um, make some friends, you know, yeah. Yeah, and it's in, it is very interesting that it does feel more like a community than mm -hmm. and any other form of social media I've tried right. yet. So yeah, yeah, that is, a, huh? I didn't think and it's about image that. based, yeah. so like you'd think exactly. like Facebook on the other end, where you're a lot of people writing or t like putting down statuses, sharing things that mm -hmm. way. You'd think that would be more communal, but I, I think we're far more visual society than we ever give ourselves credit for. Yeah. Like, and our visual like language, it, it crosses. There, there is no language. The, you can speak any language, right. And and connect on on images. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, it goes back to the picture speak a thousand words thing. And it, yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense when you when you really get to think about well, why is it working? Yeah, and it's like a bunch of sub communities. Even in this one Instagram community, you can find a pocket of people that just fuck with the shit that you fuck with. Like, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's crazy how that works, but yeah, it's it's very and then you can branch out of that and find another one and you can keep doing that. Yeah. It's Everybody has a, a a voice there. Everyone has a, some sort of connection there, I think. I see people who love cars. You know, right. on there and there they find a community and they follow people who just post about cars. Yep. And I'm like, "Well, man, I never look at those <laughs> right <laughs> yeah I'm not, I'm not into that right but every now and then i'll, I'll see something or like a friend will show mm -hmm. me theirs and i'm like oh that's awesome because all i see is artwork through mm -hmm. mine so i should branch out every now and then and see something different right but i also love it because my feed is pretty consistently artwork yeah it's pretty consistently like i'm not looking at somebody's meal mm -hmm. or somebody's you know they're not for real. Damn, I, just, I haven't <laughs> seen a food selfie in so long. <laughs> wow, I really filtered that shit out of my Instagram. Go me. Way to uh, go. Nice right, job. yeah. Yeah, I tell people that. Like, I take pride in that. Like, you can you can get to the point to where you are just constantly inspired on your page. Yeah. Just from the shit that you follow and like and stuff. And that's, yeah, those algorithms, sometimes it's annoying. And, but, yeah, and you they're, feel they're like figuring you're, stuff yeah. out. Like you feel like you're in an echo chamber, but if you set right. it up right, like I am, I'm I'm better because of Instagram in some ways. Mm -hmm. Because I look at Same. stuff and I'm like, wow, that drawing just blew me out of the uh, I blew me out of the water. I don't feel confident in my work mm -hmm. anymore. That means I have to go back and start working harder. Yeah. So yeah. you know, sometimes it hits like that. Mm -hmm. Other times I'm like, man, I I'm doing pretty good for myself. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Like I tell people, I'm in this weird in between stage now to where like if if followers was money i'm definitely not in the one percent club i'm not that rich mm -hmm. but i'm not that poor either so i'm like in the i'm in this weird stage where i have more like i'm i'm making a metaphor with money and followers mm -hmm. That's yeah I mean. like i'm i have more money than most people but I'm still not rich, like by no means. Yeah, and it's same this boat. weird same in between boat. stage, yeah. and it kind of feels good because every now and then people are like, "Damn, you got a lot of followers." I'm like, "Yeah, I kind of do." Two years ago, I did not. Yeah, and it's Instagram. Like, yo, like I, I had a sense of purpose down here just because of Instagram. Really, yeah. I didn't know what what I was gonna do down here, but I stayed in my room and drew the hell out of some yogis on Instagram. <laughs> Started getting some reposts, and now we're here. So it's been it's been pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I can think of one. I got a, a magazine that bought one of my pieces for an article they were doing in London. And I was like, what? they, I think they paid me 10, 10 pounds. Uh, what's that, like $9 or something? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was cool, blown away. I was like, I don't care. It's not about the money at that point. Right. It's about the fact that I got on Instagram. I started showing my work. Someone saw it. Someone wanted to use it for something else. Uh, mm -hmm. And it fit. And I read that, like, I feel like the followers I have and like the Instagram, it, it feels grassroots for me because I'm mm -hmm. not, right. I mean, I know people can go out and buy followers if they really want it so to. It's like yeah, you, can, you can go follow a ton of people and then unfollow them and like yeah. that, that's so whack to me. But I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a few tricks out there you can do. Oh yeah, most right. definitely. And uh, I like to, to 
consider every one of my followers like I, I earned through mm -hmm. just doing what I loved. And yeah. it's the same for them. Like I follow people that I see something they do and I like it, so I like them. Right. Like, I'm not following anybody because I'm going to get a fall back or this. Right, or that. yeah. It feels... Uh, feels more organic. Yeah, I have friends that I don't follow just because, like, for why am I going to follow you? <coughs> All you post is selfies, fam. Like, I'm good on exactly, that. Yeah, yeah. I know what you look like, dog. Exactly. Like, and I've seen you in many yeah. different situations. Right, yeah. It's like, so I'm going to pass. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny how that works. So on to the, the new 365 project you own. What do you think? Do you have a different goal? Or do you think that... Because surely this is going to be a different experience, but it's going to be similar as well yeah do you uh, have a different goal in mind or is there any differences between this year and last year in terms of your execution like or are you doing anything different i guess is what i'm asking i think i'm not yet okay and i think that's the biggest problem i have with it right now because my biggest goal would have to be i want to get to doing something that gets us dangerous again like it's scary it's mm -hmm. out of my like i get out of my depth again mm -hmm. and i want to do something that doesn't come as easy as this. Mm -hmm. Like I want to push myself further this year than I did last year. Right. Cause I pushed myself pretty far last year, I think. Yeah, sure. But now I think it's like, now it's easy. Cause you know, you can do that. Yeah, now. Exactly. Like, All like, right. So if I'm going to step up again, yeah. How do I make it harder for myself? Exactly. Yeah. You know? And, and it's, it's hard to do that sometimes too. When people are like, Oh, I love what you do. I love your style of mm -hmm. this. And then be like, well, I'm throwing that out the window and I'm going right. to try something completely new and you right. might not like it. So, yeah. Um, but it's about growth because now I feel like I have some tools in my in my pocket that I can yeah. always go back to. Yep. But if I don't keep improving, then then I think that'll be the only time I fail if I'm right. not trying to get myself better. Right. So you're in this process still of thinking of these ways to push it. Are you still working on stuff the same size? Uh, similar size. Stuff? I'm working on bigger size stuff too, though. I'm actually uh, the the worst thing I think that happened. Not worst thing. I should say like mm -hmm. the. The thing that I'm, I'm least proud of is the fact that I haven't gone to, to full completion with like another big drawing. Mm -hmm. Like I used to do that every now and then, like I have a couple of these, mm -hmm. um, but it's been a while since I've like thought of something and like really executed it the way I wanted to. So yeah. uh, I've, time I have some, sure. some big drawings I want to work on and I really want to do some, some giant like in between, drawings. In between the... Right. Yeah, but before the end of this year is done, I, I would love to have like four or five giant pieces, like full wall size. Oh man! Like, get, yeah, yeah. get some big paper and right. really, some really big brushes and big everything and a lot of ink. <laughs> yeah. Just all of it. Yeah, and go, <laughs> right. go giant because that's it's the most fun feeling to like complete a big piece and work. It really it. is it's like yeah. physical. It's great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was working on like just notebooks I could fit in my backpack for so long. And then I, <coughs> after I got, I bought one when I first moved to here to Austin and I ran through that one so fast. So I was like, all right, I bought another one. And then after I bought another one, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm done with the small paper. And I was cutting limbs off and I'm like, man, yeah, if I keep if I cutting keep these limbs <laughs> off. So I'm like, all right, Kyle, you got to go to the big boy paper. Yeah. It's such a rewarding thing. Like it's, it does feel good to execute something on something bigger and it just feels more grand. And now I get the, wow, I didn't think that was that big response. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's like, pretty dope, that's right? Pretty yeah. 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 That, feels, that looks great too. Yeah. Like in a big space, like, I don't know, there's, there's every size is, is fun to work in mm -hmm. and that gives different benefits and, you know, detractions, mm -hmm. but big is, is fun. Yeah. What do you think about colored inks or... Anything like that. Uh, color in general. How do you feel about color? I've noticed you, you like monochromatic stuff as well, like me. Yeah, that's another reason I'd, I'd like to push myself out of that. So uh, last night I was actually, uh, I put down some pastel on some larger pieces mm -hmm. and I took the black ink and I put it over that. Mm -hmm. But real light, like, so I'm, I'm trying to play with an, uh, a new style, sort of, mm -hmm. uh, and, and color is definitely going to be a part of that. Yeah. Or even if, like, just a, a small, like, kind of intro into it, if you just use, like, one color for a piece. It doesn't have to be, like, full on like, color yeah, composition. Like, yeah. It can be, like, a black and white just like that. And then, I guess, when you pick the focal point that you want, make that, like, red. Yeah. Or something like and that. And I've done a few of those before, but I kind of want to go to a point where I'm almost doing this in red. Like, the entirety Ooh, of it. Pretty like, nice, yeah. And see if I can do that or, like... Pick a pick one color and do it, 
in this style for a while and then see if I can start blending and, and figuring mm -hmm. out a way to make it all make sense to me. Color, right. I love color in a lot of ways, but it's, um, it's another one of those things that I can overdo real mm -hmm. fast. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've always looked like I love color as well. I, I think sometimes, especially with portraits, I think color can be a distraction sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can, sometimes you need it. Not need it, but in terms of the composition, I guess it just depends. There are no absolutes with mm, art. Yeah. I love art for that, but I don't know. Just for me personally, I've just always been a little bit more fond of just black and white. Yeah. But maybe that's because I'm a little lazier too, and I know a colored pencil drawing takes hell. <laughs> oh, it so takes many a long layers, time. Yeah. Man. So many layers. Yeah. But, but yeah. the ink goes down fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm just kind of thinking out loud for for viewers' sake or even just for the sake of the podcast. I think it'd be really beneficial for us to like we're gonna film this and all this. I think if we could find another time for me to come back and we just we could just have an art session and that, then we film I that. Would love that. Yeah. That way we don't have to like rush anything. You don't want you to feel like oh I gotta crank out something in fifteen minutes. Like, yeah. Because nah, you know I gotta gotta go to work and all that anyway. Exactly. I'd rather yeah. just relax and have a good time and I'll come back and I'll I'll. This so this might not be episode eleven, y'all. Hey, but oh well. Maybe we're eleven this, and eleven point five. Yeah, we're gonna make this a good episode for y'all. <laughs> this might be episode thirteen. I might hold this for a couple weeks just for the sake of getting to really watch you get down. Yeah, on no, I would love yeah. to. That would be a lot of fun, and I like working with someone else, like yeah. in the same room too. It's be like, hey, let's just. Just right, zone out and not talk to each other for hours. <laughs> <laughs> and film Why? That. That's the Why? Most entertaining podcast. Why you can think is that of. so fun for artists? <laughs> I don't know. Just be in this room with me, but don't talk to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't say a word. Just do your thing. I'll right. do my thing. Yeah. It feels. It does feel great. That's amazing. Feels so good. I was uh, talking to one of my uh, homies, Demetrius, on another podcast episode. Like, I'll I will tell girls like you got so many much cool points with me. You gained so many cool points if we can sit down and just chill for a couple hours without really having to need each other for something. Yeah, like, I need that personally because just for the creative space, oh, I can't I, be in my creative space and have you jumping into that all the time. You got to be doing something too. I know. I and I can be so bad on the other end too of like talking or saying mm -hmm. something when I don't need to that I love when I get into those those moments where I'm like now I know what I'm doing and I don't have to say a word right like, yeah yeah those somber moments of just chilling in the room with somebody and not interacting are the cool it's weird <laughs> but it's the coolest man I'm telling you it's so cool <laughs> it's, it goes back to what I was saying too it's like well, maybe we don't need words as much like we we work real well through images and we do work well through like silence and word. like just that that energy that people have between each other, sometimes words get in the way. <laughs> yeah, I think animals are an ultimate testament to that. Not even animals, insects, all types of other living organisms that don't talk. We as humans think we're so fucking advanced just because we do this. <laughs> yeah, well, right. Because we all, all agreed these... that this yeah. word means this thing. And <laughs> right, yeah. Ants are like, hey man, go over there and go get the stack of bread, and then come back, and we're gonna go give it to the queen. <laughs> and maybe they're doing that with the feelers or whatever. But yeah, like they're going and building these elaborate homes and doing all this shit. They're not talking. They're like, connected. They know what yeah. they. they they know what they're they doing. are talking though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they're talking, but they're not talking. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah you're right. You language just gets in the way, man. It, it really <laughs> can sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how that works. Um, let's see. Hmm, I'm trying to think if I have if I've covered about most of. I know there's more questions. Oh, it like never have. ends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then and this is the point where if I'm driving home, I'm like, damn, I forgot that <laughs> part. But we already have a part two yeah. planned anyway, so I'm not really stressing on it. I'm curious yeah. how long we got. Hey, we got a nice little, we're about at an hour, hour 12. Man, that goes by. It goes by fast, goes don't by it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fast is crazy. So like on one of them, I, I was like, damn, almost, we was here for three hours, fam. <laughs> like, jeez. Which is arguably way too long, but it was so fly though. Yeah, just to, just it's, to sit and vibe. There's no need to stop, like ever, if you're feeling good about it. Right. So yeah. no matter what you're doing, for sure. But yeah, of course, we'll set up another, you know, time too. Like we can, we can do this all yeah. the time. Did you do? You did this one too, right? I did. Yeah. This is uh, uh, another one that we we're just talking about color. I I feel like this is one yeah, that I some color in that. I utilize color 
the way I like to. I like the way you did that in yeah. there. They're very, what is it, what's it, cool? They're cool colors, yeah. so they're not they're very not loud or right. Anything. Yeah. And and with this, I actually put down um, some white acrylic paint first so you can see these lines and mm -hmm. stuff. And then I put the ink over it and let mm. the ink sort of, uh, I like to mix mediums a lot, uh, but this is one of those that came completely out of my head. Like, mm. I had the idea of what I kind of wanted to get done, and although, again, it didn't come out the exact way it was there, like, this, I'm actually really proud of this piece for some reason. It just, it speaks to me, it speaks more to what, um, what I feel I want to get out, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I think it's a really strong composition. Yeah. I like that there there is color in there, but it's not a lot of color. Like I said, I like the mm -hmm. fact that it's cool. I like that the it's it's very exposed right here and then there's some colors here and here as well but the way it kind of gradually goes back into that monochromatic is really really smooth yeah. i like that it gives it a nice sense of balance i dig it yeah it's uh it, again i love emotion I love when you can make someone feel something and and do it with with an image i love that i'm not saying this does it for other people right. but when it does it for me i like it oh your you know? your pieces definitely capture a lot of emotion in and it's, I think that goes back to the the way you, you're mark making and the fact that you're not so damn detailed and that there isn't <laughs> every little thing for you to see and you kind of have to make your own things out of it. And it because of that, I think that's exactly why somebody will stare at it and then you automatically just feel something. Just, I don't know, maybe not everybody does with every single piece, but, but someone on is, average, yeah, because yeah, you have so much, you can't help but... You're gonna look if you got a hundred of Patrick stuff on the wall. You're gonna look at something and yeah. struck to it. Like it's just gonna happen. Sometimes that's what it was. Like it's just volume. Like if you keep doing so, like so much, mm -hmm. you're gonna start touching more people. Like if you do the one thing, you're limiting yourself to like yeah. you're gonna have to find people who really like that. They're out there. Right. But if you do a variety and you do a lot. You're gonna to talk to more people, I think. You're gonna yeah. have those connections. Yeah, which reminds me, just the the courage of selling it, because I've I've had some some projects. I think you took me back to my first time. I thought about like when I first met you. I mm -hmm. immediately thought about when I, I first got the first ever Pokemon handbook, and there was 150 50 Pokemon in there. I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, and I just like you know what? I'm gonna flip through every page and I'm gonna draw every, every single, single one. one of them. Yeah, and. Why I did it, I don't know, but I don't know if I ever would have sold that. I could, if my dad still has, I don't know if I'd sell that now, <laughs> just because that meant so much. That was my first time. That was it, yeah. Yeah, that was my first time of like, I'm going to do this, and I executed it, and it really, and I didn't think I could do it, honestly, but just to, and oh. to compare what we're doing, like, you're selling yours, like, so with that, was there ever a moment where you have them all hung up, and somebody's like, I want to buy that one, and you're like, oh. No. No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, I yes, wish. Man, I yeah, wish. I'll take that money. I'll take that. So so. I think because it because it, it, it sounds like that to me. Like I used mm -hmm. to think that way. Like if people are selling their artwork, I'm like, well, they're just doing it for the money, and like anyone can do that. I'm like, mm -hmm. no. I love it when people buy my stuff mm -hmm. because I love someone else being like, I want that. Because when I buy my artwork from other people, I I buy it because. I don't, I can't live without it in a way, right, you know, right, like right, that, yeah. that speaks to me so much that I want it. So when it goes away and someone buys some of mine, mm. uh, it's, it's so beneficial to me. Like it's not just monetary. It's not just that. Uh, plus this isn't the thing that matters to me. Like th this physical object doesn't mean shit to me mm. at the end of the day. Why I'm doing it is because I love doing the work. Damn. So the work is what, if someone bought that from me, that might be a difference. Somehow right. figured out a way to be like, I'm going to take... The I wanna... feelings you got out of doing it. Yeah. yeah. Then I, I don't know, you know. That's why also like collaborating with people who want to like hire you to do work can be difficult mm -hmm. because you're like, they they have an idea, you have an idea, but they're going to drive the, right. you know, what the end product looks like eventually. Right. So, um, but yeah, I know I love selling my work. I love it when it leaves. Wow. Yeah. I think mean, I'm going to sell some more of my shit. <laughs> I, I, I got two full portfolio booklets at this point. And I'm like, well, what am I keeping it for? Like, well, I mean, for the sake of, like, documenting the last, like, five to seven years, that that's kind of awesome. Yeah. But I don't need 
every single one of those at this point. I have so much shit now. It's like, yeah. all right, I and can keep stocking it up if I want to, but <laughs> for what? And yeah. I scan every one of these. I've got digital images of everything okay. I do. I didn't think about so, that, yeah. I mean, I can I can reprint things. I can right. do, you know, I can take these to different sizes. Uh, right. I've sold a couple prints, you know, that mm -hmm. way. And I also scan them so that uh, I can decide if I want to make prints too, because yeah. uh, I don't like I like to sell original work as much as I can, because it's it's something that not everybody can afford, and I want to have people afford what I do for as long as I can. Right. So right. I mean, I'm, of course, I'd love to be making millions, you know, right. selling individual pieces, but I also love that community of of I love to buy artwork. I love other people's work so much that um, I don't want to get out of the realm of affordability mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah, yeah, that struck me too. I think he was one of the only people I saw selling art. I mean, I'm sure there was a ton of other ones. There was like 400 different artists mm -hmm. in the East Austin <laughs> Studio Tour. And I think I met like 20 of y'all because you guys were so awesome that on one of the days, yeah, yeah, I vibed with y'all for like two hours, yo. I'm <laughs> like, damn, I could have met so many other artists, but damn, they were so cool. Like, yeah, go with the experience, crazy. right? But I think you were one of the few that I met that were selling stuff for even under a hundred dollars, let alone like. To, to 50 like and I thought that was really admirable as well but and it go it just makes sense you have so many of them fuck it yeah like, why not if, yeah. if I didn't have so many I would be like all right I can't so do long, it folks that's the GoPro diet. that's a GoPro yeah so at this <laughs> point I'll slide something up like this is why I have a lot of drawings on the back burn so I could slide a drawing totally. in there yeah. or but if we're gonna get one of your things I could almost save it or I could repost. We'll figure something out. Totally, we'll figure yeah. something out. I'll yeah. probably slide your art in there, though. Or put one of your images to do that. That way, I don't have my art and your art in the same one. I really mm -hmm. like to give... I want to have each episode to give the artist Just their one, own yeah. platform to be able to show their stuff. We're already talking about it for a whole hour to two hours. I want to show it to them for those sure, comfortable sure. to show the process. I want to do all that, too. But anyways... Yeah. Um, oh, no. I mean... I love that idea too. Um, but yeah, we were getting at uh, like pricing of artwork and things like that. Um, you know, the, if I only had two or three pieces, I'd be charging a lot more. Mm -hmm. But you know, the more I do, the more I feel comfortable selling more of it for a little bit less than other people might be selling it. But I don't a lot of sense. ever feel like I'm selling it for less than it's worth to mm -hmm. me. You know, I, uh, my prices actually have been going up. So. Mm. That's, I mean, that's only because people are wanting to buy them. So right. next year it might be 75, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, like you'd be amazed how much you can make if you sell, you know, 200 at $50, you're making the same as if you sell one at, you know, you know, thousand dollars. Right. So, like, yeah. Wow. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> see, Pat, you got my mind going. Cause I was already like, see this goes to how much East Austin Studio Tour inspired me again, once again, because I was always into this thinking I'm a hustler and wanting to sell prints and sell a whole bunch of stuff for the Lolo. And, and I, I'm still kind of okay with the print sales and doing that mm -hmm. and selling things for an affordable price. But I'm getting to this point to where like with the technical skill and at the rate I'm cranking stuff out and now I'm increasing in size. Like, and I saw so many people selling stuff for thousands that I felt empowered leaving the East Austin Studio Tour. And I've been on this mission ever since. Like, I'm going to sell something for $1,000 this year. Or if not this year, next year, I'm going to sell a piece for $1,000. But I now have these smaller sketchbooks of so much stuff in those portfolios. Why not sell those for like 100 or 50 bucks or something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I met a, a, a friend that of mine who, who really taught me the ins and outs of like mm -hmm. where, where you should be and where I'm headed is you always have three tiers. You got your, you know, lower tier, mm. price, middle tier, and the big stuff. Mm. Uh, the big stuff sells the lower price stuff because people will look at something huge and be like, that's amazing, I want that, I can't afford it, but I want that because I want something of theirs. Uh, so my goal yeah. is not to sell one thing for a lot, but like I want to get to making 10, I think 10, thousand dollars this year is my goal mm. like that's what i want to make for the entirety of my art sales mm. uh and then next year i just want to double it right you know <laughs> so man but it doesn't matter how you get there it's that you know right. you've done stuff everything you can to get there i really like that yeah that three tier i'm definitely going to carry that with me i 
had a feeling that I wanted to do it. I thought it was important to have that balance of having some stuff for cheap and then having some stuff for good. But I never thought about yeah. that. That the big stuff sells the small stuff. They really want that big one. But... But not everybody can right. afford it, and you know, yeah, sometimes I, I do take the same a small thing. one and then probably come back and get a big one if they get that. Oh man, you're gonna blow yeah. my mind, Patrick. And I get a bunch of people who buy multiples of my stuff because they're like, Oh, this, these are gonna look really good together. Mm -hmm. So I've had people come in by three, five, ten at a time, Whoa. and I'm like, Oh man, that that's just like selling one big piece, yeah, yeah. And I'm not that worried about it now that I think about it because I'm. I can do one of these bigger pieces in a few days now. Like if I really sat down, I could make one in one day, really. So, and I feel like such a machine now that I'm like, fuck it, sell some of those. I can just make some more of them. Yeah. yeah, I can make a whole bunch of other smaller ones. And I'm never going to run out of everything in the portfolio. At least not until you die and then it's like, all your shit. <laughs> and then someone gets everything. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'd be damned if I die and then my shit sell. No, I want to sell my shit now <laughs> while I'm alive. Like, fuck all that. Yeah. I want it both, you know? I want it all. Right, <laughs> for real though. Yeah, yeah give right. It now, give it later. Right, give it yeah. I want to be a legend now and later, damn it. <laughs> yeah, why not? Shit. That's awesome. Yeah. Why not look for the biggest? For real. For real, man. So what do you think? So that's, that's a goal for you this year. Um, outside of that, where do you, the, the $10,000, where else do you see yourself going artistically? Um, not even necessarily this year, but just, it's really like, I, I would love to start uh, working with other people, like, uh, having my artwork, uh, in, uh, in magazines or in other, mm -hmm. like that one that, that hired me, I'd love to start really branching out and, and doing work for, you know, uh, I don't know, other, just other creatives, you know, mm -hmm. other people doing books, uh, doing, even if people just want to buy it for like their awesome, you know, hotels or things right. like that. Like there's so many cool avenues where I'd love to see my work at, mm -hmm. uh, that I'd love to try to like get into some public spaces right. uh, and, and some galleries yeah. you know, eventually. Um, the gallery thing is, is double-edged sword. You know, it's like, I love the idea of going to galleries and, and having my work there. Uh, but it's also a, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, you know, you know, getting the time to go find the right galleries, getting mm -hmm. the time to get in there. Some of them have long wait lists right mm -hmm. now. So, uh, it's just about putting it together. It's, it's working harder. So right. my goal for this work is years to work a lot harder. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like with that, because I definitely want to get in East, is that something that like people have to like start getting into right now to try and get into East Austin Studio Tour? Well, technically we're working on West. I don't know if you know what West mm -hmm. is. Uh -uh. It's the other, there's two shows they put on every West? year. West is in May and mm -hmm. the, the closeout for uh, signing up for that is February 23rd. Oh, I can still get in West. You can still get into West. I'm about to get in West. We're oh, still shit. trying to find our space because you have to have a uh, yeah, space. Yeah, um, you find your own space. You can, yeah. You usually have to find your own space, or you have to get with okay. uh, a group like like Articulation that we're working with, um, which I'd actually be happy to get you in touch with some of them. Oh, the yeah, people who run awesome. it. Too. Yeah, I wanted to ask a little bit about yeah, Articulation. We're just trying to build that community up too, so that we have uh, a group of artists that shows regularly together because mm -hmm. um, if we're going to get anywhere we're going to have to do it together yeah right <laughs> as yeah. artists i think right going alone like it takes a long time to get to that level mm -hmm. yeah um, but yeah we're, we're hopefully having a space found i'm, I'm really West. hoping this week uh, yeah but yeah every little bit counts uh, that and then west, east is going to be in november and usually what they do is right after west ends mm -hmm. then you you got like a month before they start taking all their, um, mm -hmm. making sure everyone gets their submissions in for that. Yeah, yeah I'm assuming you got to send a scanned image of your work. Yeah, uh, I believe uh, in their catalog it's like a scanned image of, of at least one, one piece that you've done. Uh, they do charge right now if you want to be in the catalog, like mm -hmm. have your own listing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'll do that, sometimes I'll just use our group listing. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I pay some dues to articulation, but it's right, not, right. I think it's like sixty dollars for the mm -hmm. year, and and basically everything that we get involved in, I get press for. So mm -hmm. yeah, that works. Yeah. Did you find? So you said you've done years where you did it just with articulation and and actually put your name individually in there. Yeah. As well. Did you find any other 
like did you find a bigger amount of exposure when you did it individually and with articulation or did it feel similar uh, I, I only did it yeah you know, I couldn't say there was a big difference okay uh, I think over time there would be like mm -hmm. eventually I want to be the one that people are coming to see right because that just means I'm growing to that point where mm -hmm. people yeah. are, are looking for what I'm doing um, sense, yeah. so the beginning I don't think it's all that necessary as mm -hmm. long as you start getting out and meeting people getting a list of people who are are seeking you out specifically that's the goal yeah yeah, yeah. oh that's yeah. exciting I have another <laughs> sense of purpose I'm about to hit up all my homies we're gonna try and form up like the Avengers yeah <laughs> I love that yeah, or Justice League depending on whoever likes what yeah but Justice League what and all that so <laughs> so yeah so tell me more about articulation I is that what it, did I say it right yeah articulation, articulation but it's yeah. art Art, yeah, 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 yeah. ART cast yeah, really that's really clever. Yeah, we we were we started off as the East Austin refugees, I think, because <laughs> uh, we were always looking for new spaces. Uh, <laughs> I like that too. That's gangster. <laughs> that sounds like a rap group, dog. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, it's a, it's a great group of people. I met them in 2014. Uh, Dave McClinton is is one of like a good friend of mine who I met through that who makes unbelievable artwork. Mm. Uh, and then uh, Anne and Dawn. Dawn actually is not even an artist. She actually just does like the business side for us. That's like awesome. she finds spaces. It's really important yeah. to have somebody I mean, in your crew that's like that. Yeah. yeah. And to say she's not an artist, I mean, she actually does some really nice work, but she right. just doesn't show. Mm -hmm. um, so she's, she's a teacher and she's, uh, she's so behind us. Like I don't think we're anything without her. Wow, that's uh, awesome. Her and Ann, they both like pound the pavement for us and get it taken care of. So. That's dope. Um, but yeah, we will. We we'll usually have a rotating group of people. I think Dave, Ann, and I are the only people who've shown at every one mm. of our East West or other shows. Mm. Um, but man, like meeting up with these people is, is life changing it's awesome. in the art in my art career. How say. many of you is it? Um, so usually there's about 15 to 20 artists who show at any given event that totally. we have. Uh, we like the more the better because mm, right. people are looking to see the most they can all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's a great group. Uh, like I said, I don't know where I'd be without them right now. That's dope. <laughs> That's super dope. Yeah, I'd love to meet some more of these people and vibe with them. And the same idea that I have for one of my other homies, shout outs to, um, shout outs to you, Russ. And your group BDC, um, he has a, a group of individuals called the Blue Dozen Collective, and I think it's a dozen of them, but if it's not a dozen of them, besides the <laughs> point, it's a group of really talented artists and they work together and do something as well. And I was giving him the idea, like, we should do a, a BDC podcast. Or if we can, I mean, granted, it'd be almost impossible to get everybody, yeah. right? But if we could get, like, two to three individuals from yeah, your or do a series. Like, we could do a two or three at a time. Ooh, and yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd yeah. be really, really fun. That'd be great, yeah. Get a few people. It's, it's always fun to get a few people on the mic and, and talk <laughs> and let a round table of discussion get around. Especially oh, if y'all have one group and y'all are kind of sitting together because you guys know each other pretty well. Exactly, and yeah. Jokes can fly. <laughs> and yeah, yeah that, I think that'd be a really good idea to work. If you have two or three homies, or you can hit them up, and we can figure that out in due time. I would love that. Yeah, I'm always down for for doing that. Yeah, so whichever other homies in articulation are down for it too, I will yeah. reach out to them. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, totally. that'd be awesome. That'd be really really cool. Um, I think I think we're pretty solid. This is a really solid episode. I like. I, we could definitely stretch it out more if we wanted to. I feel like I could talk. I <laughs> feel like yeah, we could go for, for days. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and keep it pretty concise and. How it is now, I like this. I think this is a really good kind of flow from art to some other things and jokes around a little yeah. bit. And I like that. I think that was really awesome. Um, That's great. I had a blast. This is this yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, Thanks. I appreciate yeah, I'm glad you, like, it. you doing this is, is I think, fantastic. Thank you, man. I yeah. appreciate it. I'm glad you was comfortable with the camera and <laughs> and to get your stuff later. It's going to be really yeah, exciting. So I'm as totally soon as we done. can get that up, we'll, we'll talk about our schedules and stuff like that. We'll figure something out to okay. have another session. That would be even more fun because we actually get to work on some art. Exactly. Yeah. Sit in silence. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and vibe in silence for a couple hours yeah. and bond that much more. <laughs> yeah. So um, thanks to you art lovers and art appreciators and fellow creators. Anybody an hour and a half in, I appreciate you. Um, plug your Instagram. Oh, it's Moran Illustration. Uh, M-O-R-A-N Illustration. 
Awesome. Um, yeah, find just all my stuff there. One word straight through, just right? Just one word straight through, all lowercase. Awesome. Yeah, and he, he literally posts... Do you literally post it every, every day? Every single day, yeah. Yeah, and he, he'll post all the drawings that he does, and he puts the day on it, so you, you get to really be a part of the process with him. It's, it's so, so cool. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a pleasure. Um, thank you for coming on once again, Pat. This I'm happy to. Awesome. I'm happy to. Um, so, like I said, this might be episode 11. It might not. We'll see. But I'm gonna we're going to record his process and get some of that so we can put that on this episode as well. Be that much more dope. We'll see, but it's concluding another episode. I appreciate y'all. Subscribe, like, comment, all that cute shit. You already know what it is. Um, love y'all. Appreciate y'all, and we'll be back.